Everybody in God's house, please stand. Even if you are a sinner, I'm going to ask you to praise the Lord. Why? Because you've got breath in your lungs. Even animals praise the Lord, but everybody ought to praise the Lord this morning. Holy Heavenly Father, speak to us now. Stir my heart. We say it often, Lord, and sometimes I don't know if we realize what we're saying, but I want to be changed. I want to be conformed to the image of your precious Son, Jesus Christ. I don't know what that will entail. I don't know what you will have to do to make me like Jesus. But Lord, I say it, and I say it reverently. Make me like Jesus. This very day, in this very moment, open my understanding that I might know Jesus. And I pray that for the entire congregation. And everyone said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. So, our New Year's Eve prayer service, which was mighty, we started this thing called the Remnant. Friday night, hundreds and hundreds of men filled up this floor and we prayed and sought God. And we come here this morning to continue our quest and to raise our hands and our requests to God to be made more like Jesus. And tomorrow night, we will continue this again. We should never stop seeking the face of God, the approval of God, the blessing of God. Now, Pastor Greg gave you our theme scripture. Therefore, brethren, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or your acceptable praise. And do not be conformed to this world, but be changed, transformed by the renewing of your mind that you can determine what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Now follow me if you will, please. In Mark chapter 4, that's where I'm headed. Mark chapter 4, Jesus has just finished the teaching on the parable of the sower of seeds. And then he pulls his disciples away and explains to them what it means. And then he said some remarkable words. He said to them, take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has to him, more will be given. But whoever does not have even what he has will be taken from him. But I want you to take notice of these words given to them, spoken to us. Take Heed what you hear. Brothers, Jesus one time said <clears throat> to the disciples, He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Not everybody has ears. Not everyone can ascertain, determine, and receive what God has spoken. If you have ears to hear, they were given to you by God. <clears throat> and your ears are precious. That device, that apparatus, spiritual thing that God has given you to hear, understand, and receive the truth is a gift from heaven. And he said, don't ever abuse your hearing. Be careful 
what you hear. I've been preaching on this to you lately. We can't listen to everything. We're not allowed to give ourselves to conversations and reports and commentary that ill affect our spirits. Take heed, be careful, be on guard what you hear. Careful. You have to be vicious with yourself. You have to realize, as I said last Sunday, what you listen to, you become. It affects you spiritually. The music you listen to affects you spiritually. Do I need to go through the genres of music you ought not to be listening to? No, I won't do that because you ought to know that if it doesn't glorify Christ and build you up spiritually, it is worthless. And you need to be careful what you listen to. But then there is another facet of this. When you go to Luke chapter 8, it's the same teaching about the parable, the sower of seeds. And Jesus says it a little different way. Take heed how you hear. Mark says, be careful what you hear. Jesus said, take care, care how you hear it. So the scripture that I just read to you, Romans 12 and 1, what did you hear when that was read? What did you hear God saying? It amazes me sometimes we come to church and we can actually quote scripture while fighting back a yawn. Sandra said, read something to me yesterday. Someone had written, it, it's, it's amazing that we can hold a communion cup in our hand and yawn at the same time. Because we have gotten to the place that we are too comfortable with God. We are not astounded by or even in awe of His holiness anymore. We've become accustomed to church stuff in so much that we can actually read a scripture which is from God. This did not come from men. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. God the Holy Spirit moved upon and breathed on men and they wrote the scriptures and that is the word of God. How is it that we can actually read it or hear it quoted and not even be thinking about it? Be careful how you hear it. With what degree of reverence and, and depth do you hear the word of God? When one stands up with the Bible in his or her hand, do we kind of look around and think about when church will be over and what the choir just sang and who's wearing what or when that book when this book is opened, do we go, dear God, we're about to hear from you, the almighty creator of the universe. And we have to be careful how we hear it. It's not a slight thing. It's not a light thing. The word of God can raise the dead. The word of God makes darkness flee. It was by the word of God that the worlds were made. All power in heaven and earth is in the word of God. This word that I'm preaching, this word that we're singing about is the mightiest thing on this earth. And that's why Jesus said, you've been chosen to, to have ears. What I'm telling you, I can't tell everybody. What I'm teaching, not everybody can understand. So if you can hear me, if you have ears to hear, hear. Listen carefully, but be careful what you hear. And be careful how you hear it. So let's look at that verse again, Romans chapter 1. What are you about to hear? Brethren, I beseech you by the mercies of God. So God is now speaking to us 
The Holy Spirit gave these words to Paul and God Almighty, the same one that brought the worlds into existence, is about to address brothers, sisters, family members. Ready? Here it goes. I beg you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies. Your body does not belong to you. Jesus' body did not belong to him. He teaches in Hebrews, a body you have prepared me, Jesus said to the Father. This body you gave me, you created this body for me to live in while I'm on this earth. It is not mine. I am not my own. I've been bought with a price. I can't fill it with filth. I can't abuse it with stuff. In fact, my body is a gift back to God. My body is a thank you back to heaven. It is a sacrifice. Just as Jesus laid his body on the cross, presented his body a living sacrifice, Paul now asked us to do the same thing. Present your body a living sacrifice. Notice it says living because you don't really die physically. You squirm and you rebel and you fight it with everything you have and you have to lay yourself down every day. You have to present your body every time the sun comes up. We are not allowed to abuse our bodies. We are not allowed to use our bodies for our own self-aggrandizement. We are to cover our bodies and be modest before God. We are not to expose ourselves, flaunt ourselves, march around and show ourselves. We are to cover up the temple of God and be decent people, male and female. There is nothing to show that would make somebody take their mind off Christ. You ought to dress and look in a way that, that, that people say, there's something different about that person. You ought not let Hollywood influence how you dress. You ought not to try to be the most GQ guy in the world. They ought not to be talking about your clothes. They ought to be talking about your attitude, your spirit, your demeanor, your presence. You can't put everything in your body that you want. You can't kill this body because it's a living sacrifice to be given back to God. Here's my gift from God so that my spirit can live in it, take care of it. Honor this body. See the beauty of this body, but remember that it was given to you to give back to God a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God. You want to stand in front of the mirror and make sure you're presentable to go outside, but you also want to stand before this mirror and make sure that you are presentable to walk into the presence of a holy God. And that's your reasonable service. Think of this. This is not a big deal. That's the least you can do every day. I belong to Jesus. I represent Jesus. So what are you hearing right now? Now how are you hearing it? Is this just another worn out verse of scripture? Is this just another sermon from a preacher? Or has something gripped you this morning and you realize that's not a suggestion. That's a commandment. Can everybody hear me? God never makes suggestions. He's not suggesting you be holy. He's not suggesting that you dress decently. He is not suggesting that you keep things out of your body. He is commanding you, give it back to me, 
I gave it to you. That's the least you can do. And do not be conformed to this world. What do you talk about most? When you get with your buds, what do you talk about most? Is it always sports? Is it always cars, sirs? Ladies, I don't even want to get into all the different things. I don't. I just don't. I'm very serious here this morning. And it could be funny. I could make it funny. I could make up some things. I could say some things and people go, hee hee, ha ha. But this is remnant. We're bringing ourselves to God. What do you talk about most of the time? I'll tell you what spirit-filled holy men and women want to talk about most of the time. The Lord Jesus Christ and God's goodness. Yes. And if we do veer and there are things we have to deal with, things we have to talk about, we only do it out of necessity and as soon as that, that's finished, the words on our mouths are to praise the Lord because our hearts are hungry and we are in love with Jesus. Don't be conformed to this world because it's about to pass away. Some fool in power can hit the wrong button at the, well, you found out that you can shoot down a jetliner accidentally, which Iran said it did, accidentally, okay. Then that means crazy people who have power, who have buttons to push, can do it, and only God knows the devastation and destruction and life as we know it right now could be over in no time. This world's about to pass away. John said this world is passing away but he that does the will of God abides forever. Don't be tied into, conformed to, addicted to this world, but be changed, transformed by the renewing of your mind. Think differently from the world. Ask yourself the question, do I think like them? Is my mind caught up with their stuff? Brother, you can't be a child of God and conform to this world. You cannot be a child of God and not want God. Oh, I don't want... You cannot be a Christian and just go to church on Sunday. Did you hear me preach last week? I feel it rising up inside of me again. I know there are people who don't really want to be here today. I know there are men whose wives made them come. You come out of pressure. You come so she won't ask you or nag you anymore. I know that. There are sinners here today who go to church more than sinners out there. You come out of pure obligation. But what's on your mind right now is the playoffs this afternoon. <laughs> I guess there are some this afternoon, aren't there? Or tonight. That's what's on your mind getting a little party together and having some chips and drinks and some dogs. and That's what's on your mind in the house of God right now. Something's wrong. Come on now, preacher. No, you come on. You better realize time is running out. Jesus is coming again. Or your heart could stop beating and the next person you see will, the, will be the one you have served on this earth whether it's Lucifer or Jesus. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed, changed by the renewing of your mind so you can determine what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I wonder how often we honestly get before God and cry out to know His will. Cry, I mean cry, physically weep. Show me your way, Lord. Show me your way. Guide my steps. Take me where I need to go. Create in me a new heart. Renew a right spirit within me so that all I want to do is walk in the way and the, the, the word of God. I wonder, I'm serious. What are you hearing right now? How are you hearing Right now, when this preacher says, have you ever been so hungry 
to know the will of God that you lie on your face or that you slump in a corner and say, I cannot move from this place till I feel that the Holy Spirit has spoken to my heart. How are you hearing what I'm saying right now? How about this passage of Scripture in Revelation chapter 3? <clears throat> as many as I love, I rebuke and chase, chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. What did you just hear? What did you just hear? I heard the Bible. No. What did you just hear? If I love you, I will rebuke you and chasten you. Therefore, be zealous. Get some fire in you. Have a breakdown, a spiritual breakdown. Let some zeal rise up inside. For what? For repentance. Because I'm not where I need to be with God. I don't have everything I could have from God. I need to repent. It just came to me again. We talked about this before we came in this morning. I'd like to tell all of you young, ambitious entrepreneurs, you young men who are going to make your mark in the world, you're going to have money, you're going to be independently wealthy, you're going to be known as an ambitious and successful person, you better hear this old man. When you get it, it won't be what you thought it would be. It'll cost you the rest of your life. It'll drain life out of you. It will be the biggest disappointment of your life. What was that you said, David, that a, a, a very successful man said? He wishes somebody had told him, when you get to the top, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. So I'm telling you, all that stuff you want, if you get it, you got to take care of it. And you can go view it occasionally. You can take your own tour of your stuff. As you grow older, you can walk through the garage and say, I paid that for this, and it's stuck here and covered in dust, and I got it covered. I paid that much. Did I pay that much money for that? And it didn't. In fact, it's outdated. And then you can climb up in the attic and take another tour of stuff. And every bit of it is useless. If it weren't, you wouldn't have it in the attic. That's the sorriest clap I've gotten in years right there. So can I get a witness from older, experienced people? Did I tell the truth this morning? Because if you don't have a hot relationship with Jesus, if your family is suffering because you work all the time, if you are destroying your health because you've got a goal and you're going to reach it, Brother, you're the one I'm preaching to and you're going to have one big fat disappointment. But here it goes. I have never been disappointed with Jesus. I have never, ever said, you know, this is not what I thought it was. Oh my goodness, I was expecting a whole lot more. Nope! When it came to Jesus, I always got more than I thought I would. He always answered prayer better than I could pray it. Amen. He always poured more on me than I could handle. Amen. God's been good to me. Amen. That's why if you seek him first, he'll bless you with everything else. If you'll be zealous for him, 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 and repent, repent. Yeah, why wouldn't we? We need to change our minds about a lot of things, brothers and sisters. 
We need to change our minds about how much time we think we have left. We need to change our minds about what money means to us. I don't want to get in a hum here right now, but we need to change our minds about why we got up this morning. Change our minds about worship. Change our minds about the importance of this word. Change our minds about relationships with people. Change our minds about our relationship with our spouses. We just need to repent and be zealous. Behold, okay, what are you about to hear? What are you about to hear? And how will you hear it? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Can you imagine this? The Lord of glory. Why, well, all he'd have to do is blink and he'd destroy the universe. Just one, and everything would be gone. But the Lord of glory standing at the door wanting to come in to a bunch of light-hearted, worldly-minded people sitting around partying, looking for the next thrill, the next event, which is empty and dissatisfying, worldly. And here's life, life, fullness, abundance, pure, eternal life, standing saying, may I come in? Because if you open this door, I will come in and I'll eat with you and you can eat with me. Did you hear what I just said? Did you hear what I said? But how did you hear it? Does it make you want to fall down before the Lord and say, if I've ever shut the door in your face, I repent, my God. If I've ever thought that you were in the way and I'd rather be with them doing this than have you come in and wash me and feed me and dine with me, then I repent. If anyone hears my voice, whoa, have you heard anything this morning? If anyone, anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. You see, brothers, Jesus is saying, everything you're going after, I already have for you. Everything you want is in me. Everything you need, I've got this. Why would you close the door? Why would you obscure yourself away from me? when all you need is right here. Here's another verse. What will you hear when I read this? It's the next one. To him who overcomes. Wait now. What are you about to hear? To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my Father on His throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Can you hear this? Can you hear His voice? No, that's Loran's voice. It's an old raspy, beat up, loud, obnoxious, Barney Fife kind of voice. <laughs> no, it's not. That's Jesus talking to you. If any man hear my voice, hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. So here we are now. One more crossroads, one more time. Be careful what you hear. Brother, you just heard it. Now be careful how you heard it. What will you do with it? I bring up Isaiah chapter 66 again, and God says, or, or, you mean you'd try to build me a palace? This is God asking Israel, you want to build me a palace? I built everything down there. I own everything. But this is the one to whom I will look. He that has a broken and contrite heart. Listen! And who trembles at my word. Who trembles at my word. Who regards my word 
as the word of life from the living God who has power to make anything happen, who has power to transform and change everything, trembles at my word. I, your pastor, too many times have read God's word with something else on my mind. I have studied God's word with people and situations on my mind. I have gone through the motions of church while thinking of things that need to be done tomorrow. I repent of that today in front of you. And I'm asking God, the Holy Spirit, as I become a living, I'm living, look, I'm talking, I'm breathing, look, I'm living but I lay my life down one more time before the king of kings and I say to him, here I am. My mind, my body, my spirit, I give it to you. Stand with me, please. Here, I think it will be all right if I just put my Bible right here. I want to know if there's anybody else on this Remnant Sunday 2020 who would like to be zealous and repent for a light-hearted approach to the Almighty God and the glorious life He's given us. Really? I am so sorry, Jesus, for every time I heard the knock, but I didn't get up and answer it. I repent today, Lord, for the whisper, but my ear was turned to the yell. I repent today, Lord, because you wanted to touch my heart but my heart was turned in a different direction I'm sorry Jesus that you had a bucket of eternal blessings right in front of me but I chose a wallet I'm sorry Jesus I'm sorry for the times you sent a man or a woman of God my way but they weren't pretty enough or weren't dressed well enough. No, you came in the form of someone who looked needy, and I didn't have time for them. I want somebody who smells good, who's had a bath, who's a professional, who's done it. That's who I turn to instead of the one you sent to me. I repent. Now, church, we cannot all get in the altar but we can all move from where we are. I would like to fill up the steps, the altars, the aisles as we come down. Don't come down out of pressure. Do not come down to look good. It's just another slap in the face if we do. Come down if your heart has heard, if your ears have heard, if you know what you've heard and you want to do something about what you've heard. Come down please and join me. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. And I don't know how to say it any other way. If you're one of those men or one of those persons that isn't saved and you just come out of obligation, you have never had Jesus wash away your sins, do you know that it can happen right now, this very morning? Yeah. Let Him save you and the next time your wife says, let's go to church, you'll already be in the car. I've heard from more than one in these past few weeks. Oh, I just hate for service to be over. 
I just want to stay longer. Pastor, do you have to dismiss on Monday nights at 8.15? Do we have to... I've heard 8.30 people say, do we have to shut down the service just because another group wants to come in? Yeah, we do. But just think of what you just said. Think of the joy you're experiencing and you don't even realize it. Think of the revival in your heart when you don't want to leave church and you want more of Jesus. Think of the blessing. Oh, think of the ears that God has given you. Who will help me pray right now? Will, will you help me? Will you be zealous and repent and say, Lord, I'm bringing it all back to you because it's all about you. Would you do that, Father? We so easily accumulate junk. We are giving off the odor of the places we've been. I'm thinking of this illustration. The other night, Sandra and I went out to eat Mexican. And when we got home, we got out and looked at each other and said, you smell like Mexican food. It was just in my clothes. See, folks, you give off the aroma of the places you go. You give off a scent of where you've been. But oh, in His presence, it's delightful, soothing, sweet, and sweet-smelling. So, Father, we ask You now, Remove the odor of this world from us. Remove the value system of this world from our minds. Remove the love for this world from our hearts. If need be, make us fanatics for Christ Jesus. Lord, let me love you all so much eternally more than I love anything else on this earth. Teach me, O oh Lord that this world is about to be over. It's passing away. And only those who are dining with you will remain. Can I get an amen from the whole church? You going to sing that, Tina? Go ahead. Jesus' name we worship you. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
we have heard from you this morning. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you. For those of you that are not familiar with what just happened, read 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 14. You'll understand it all. That's the Holy Spirit speaking again, confirming his word to the people. May you be blessed. We pray tomorrow night. We pray earnestly tomorrow night. We pray seriously and desperately and joyfully for what God has in store for us in the coming year. And all the people said amen. amen. Ready? Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. God be with you till we meet again.